Hello and welcome to Runkle of the Bailey. My name is Ian Runkle. I'm a Canadian Criminal Offensive Firearms Lawyer. Today I want to talk about this thing. This is the SS211 Shotgun by Sulin Arms. It's a 12 gauge over and under and I'll just show that it's unloaded here. Now one thing you might be noticing is that it is quite small. It has a 10 inch barrel about 23 inches overall in length and so some of you might be wondering wait a minute is Runkle going to jail? Is this a prohibited firearm? What's going on here? And I assure you, this is actually a non-restricted firearm. Some of you might already know where I'm going with this, but others, this might be a bit of a surprise. So let's start by having a look at the firearm reference table entry, and this is from armaletics.com. And you can see, SS211, shotgun, multi-barrel, non-restricted. 12 gauge by 3 inches, so this thing takes 3 inch shells. And yeah, it is a non-restricted firearm. You might be wondering, how is it that this is a non-restricted firearm? You've probably heard, you know, sawed-off shotguns are banned here. And doesn't this kind of look like one? Well, the main reason why this thing is legal is because of what you don't see on this. So I'll show you the, uh, the ends here. There's a complete lack of tool marks, and that's important. Let's have a look at what the law says. So I'm just going to jump us over to the criminal code here. And the way the criminal code works is basically in order, f if something is a prohibited firearm, then that trumps all other categories and it can't be restricted or non-restricted. So only if something is not prohibited, can it be any of those two things. And then if it's restricted, it can't be non-restricted and it's only non-restricted if it's a firearm that doesn't fall into those other categories. Hopefully that was clear. So the first thing we have to do is check, is this a prohibited firearm? And so we look at our definitions. So first, a handgun that, and then they talk about the barrel length or the calibers. And this is not a handgun because as much as it is small, you don't want to fire this thing one-handed. It's fairly heavy and this is clearly designed to be shouldered. So this is not a handgun. The next thing is a firearm that is adapted from a rifle or shotgun, whether by sawing, cutting, or any other alteration. And that as so adapted, one is less than 660 millimeters in length or is 660 millimeters or greater in length and has a barrel less than 457 millimeters in length. This whole firearm is less than 660 millimeters in length. However, and I'll just bring this the actual law up again here, it's not adapted by sawing, cutting, or any other alteration. That is critical here. So when I'm showing you the end of the gun, what you can see is there are no tool marks. Nobody's taken a hacksaw to this. Nobody's cut it down. Same thing with the stock. This is exactly as it comes from the factory. So that keeps us from falling into those categories for prohibited. Next is a, an automatic firearm. And this is not an automatic firearm. It's a break action shotgun, so not automatic. And any firearm that is prescribed to be a prohibited firearm which this is not. I'm not going to go through the whole list of what is and isn't prohibited, but this isn't on the list. Next, we can look at restricted firearm. So restricted firearm means A, a handgun that is not a prohibited firearm. Once again, this thing's not a handgun. This thing is meant to be held and fired with two hands, not one. Or a firearm that is not a prohibited firearm, has a barrel less than 470 uh, millimeters in length, and is capable of discharging center fire ammunition in a semi-automatic manner. Not a semi. This is a break action. So we don't fall into that category either. C, a firearm that is designed or adapted to be fired when reduced to a length of less than 660 millimeters by folding, telescoping, or otherwise. And this thing does not fold, telescope, or otherwise. The only thing it does is bend in the fashion of it's a break action shotgun, but it doesn't fire except when it's closed. So then we have any other uh, a firearm of any other kind that is prescribed to be a restricted firearm. Well, this is not prescribed to be a restricted firearm. What does that leave us with? Non-restricted firearm means a firearm that is neither a prohibited firearm nor a restricted firearm or a firearm that is prescribed to be non-restricted. So at the end of the day, this is non-restricted. That said, it's kind of interesting to think about because 
when you look at this, I mean, this thing is, you know, it is what it is in terms of its length. But I've got another shotgun right here. This is also non-restricted. And this one is much longer. I've got to sort of move it so you can see the whole thing. And once again, I'll just show unloaded. Now, if I took this shotgun, and I'll just try to hold them both up here. We'll see how dexterous I am. You can see I'm holding them sort of up together here. If I took this shotgun and cut it down to exactly the same dimensions as this shotgun, it would suddenly be a prohibited firearm. So it's this very weird sort of setup that we have in our law where this thing cannot be legally cut down to the same size as the other shotgun. But just because this came this way from the factory, it is perfectly fine. I have no idea why they set it up that way. I Maybe they just didn't think that it would be possible that somebody would manufacture a shotgun that small. I don't know. But regardless, it is a bit of a weird scenario. I have used this argument in terms of, for instance, in sentencing, when you're talking about somebody who's possessing a sawed-off shotgun and pointing out that the size of shotgun that they had might have been legal for them to possess if only it was something like this, where it came that way from the factory. Kind of frustrating. Now, at the end of the day, there are other considerations about this because you might be thinking, hey, I want to go buy one of these. And mm, let's talk about that because one of the things that you will find when you're dealing with a shotgun this size is that it's actually kind of unwieldy. You got to sort of ride up in close on it. It's not terribly comfortable to shoulder. By contrast, this thing, and this is not my favorite shotgun. I, I like this shotgun just fine, but it's not my favorite shotgun. But it's much more comfortable when you're, you know, sitting behind it. So that little bit of extra stock is actually quite helpful. The other thing is extra barrel gets you a lot more accuracy. And it's also a lot more pleasant to shoot. I've got some footage here. I went and took this thing out to the range and was trying it out. And so let's have a look at how that went. All right, let's see how much this is going to suck. A lot. A lot is my bet. Oh, Ready? Oh, man, I hate this already. Ready? Cool. <laughs> you got it, too. <laughs> All right, here it goes. It's a little bit low, man. There's a good fireball off that thing. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, the instant you pull the trigger on this thing, you feel like, you know, I have made bad life choices. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna just try one in the Olympic sharpshooter stand. Oh, good luck. All right. <laughs> I'm gonna hurt myself here. Yeah, here we go. Uh, actually, when you're ready. Uh, pull. There it goes. Yeah, I had no accuracy on that, but I also did not break my wrist. <laughs> <laughs> or ding up your thumb. Here, I, I want to. I didn't enjoy shooting it. I will tell you. I want to. Want to. Oh, high! I could feel I was high on that second one. Between the two of us, and that's the hunting gear guy, by the way. I'll try to link his channel here. Uh, we fired about as many shells through this thing as we could stand to, and I think we only broke the one clay. Now you might be saying, hey, maybe Runkle just sucks, but I did way better with other shotguns that I brought that day. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend that when I'm using the full size over and under that I'm breaking two clays with every throw and that I'm some sort of skeet god. I'm not going to be bringing home trophies in any discipline. But it was a lot easier to break clays with this thing than it was with the SS211. Now, out of the interests of science, I also tried the same thing with slugs. So let's have a look at that. Okay. 
that's the last time I fire this thing. Alright, let's try this bad boy. I wasn't missing a lot with the slugs. The exception was the SS211. All I could manage to do with that is turn money into noise, and not the noise I wanted. I wanted the ding, and all I was getting is bang. So not a whole lot of success with it. There's also a moment when I pick up the Baikal, that's the full size over and under that I've got there, and I shoulder it, and you can hear me sort of grunt. And the reason why is I was actually sporting a giant bruise on my shoulder there, because the SS211 was beating me up pretty badly. Uh, I still have a bit of the bruise, and I'd show it to you, except if you want to see me with my shirt off, you've got to subscribe to my OnlyFans. That's a joke, YouTube. Please don't demonetize me. So I was not able to use the SS211 for a whole lot you know, of success in terms of breaking clays or with the slugs. I'm not actually sure what you'd want to do with this thing. It might be useful, about the only use case I can think of is maybe for bear defense and only really if you're planning on holding off until the bear's real close. So kind of a last minute, last ditch effort. I wouldn't want to take this hunting. I don't think it's a really great, you know, backpacking gun. There's other lighter shotguns that I think are a little better because they've got a longer barrel. They make it easier to hit things. But I do appreciate the sort of meme value. I appreciate the fact that it kind of pokes fun at our criminal justice system and the weird and fairly arbitrary nature of what is and isn't banned. I still, you know, find myself thinking. As I pick this thing up again. That a lot of people have gone to jail for having shotguns that are this size or longer and you know still were found to be criminals because they had it and they got their gun to be this size through a shotgun now the other thing people might be wondering is do i think criminals are going to rush out and buy these well no because the same people who are running around with sawed off shotguns don't have firearms licenses and so they're not going to be buying these there's really no use case for why you'd want to buy this thing if you're a criminal so I don't really, uh, I don't see this as likely to be something that I see in a lot of police reports. Maybe if they happen to steal one from somebody, but even so, I imagine if they got this, the first thing they'd do is probably hacksaw it down a little further and once again make it prohibited. If you shave so much as half a millimeter off this thing, you just go over it a little bit with a file or, you know, just give it a haircut with a... Uh, with a hacksaw, then suddenly it becomes a prohibited weapon. Our laws are strange, but I do appreciate the way this kind of pokes fun at them. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you found this to be interesting or educational. Um, if you want to comment on my shooting abilities, yeah, I know I'm, I'm not going to be bringing home any trophies in anything. But I certainly enjoy being out there. I had a, a blast going out and shooting, even if the least, the gun I enjoyed least when I was out there was this one. So I also want to thank my Patreon supporters. You guys help this channel, you know, function. You help me uh, be able to do some of the neat stuff that I'm able to do for some of these. Uh, I've got some other plans to do some uh, hands-on testing, and that's made possible by you guys. So I've got a link to the Patreon below if you want to uh, support. But I'd like to take this time to thank, at the $50 level, Jonathan Wheeler, Jason Elliott, Canada's National Farms Association, Kyle Martin, Jean-Guy Toussaint, Ivo Nedev, the CCFR, 
and the Canadian Shooting Sports Association. At the $30 level, Mark Olivier Demour and Sights and Arms Limited. And at the $20 level, Matt Ward, Mark Whittington, Dale Nesbitt, Cameron Johnson, and Andrew Elsich. I also want to thank everyone in the $10 level who will be in the crawl immediately following. Thank you for watching. I hope this has armed you with knowledge and SS211. I'm not going to tell you not to buy one, but I this is a borrowed firearm. Once it's returned, I'm not going to miss it. I guess that's the, uh, the bottom line on the review. Uh, thank you once again and see you next time.